Make sure you make it in this life. Flashbangs or transfixations of light and energy everywhere. I don't know how else to explain this. Other than that. Storm made well in the atmosphere. How is that even possible? Not even possible that that storm is out well in the atmosphere. <laughs> I've been hearing and seeing spirit everywhere, and I know. It would take faith beyond measure for everybody to believe me. But I really, really would appreciate some prayer time from Christians anywhere or anyone else who understands this because I've been told that I'm going through transformation or the conversation as written in the Old Testament. It said conversation. Jesus Christ called it transformation. I, uh, through the spirit so which is different than transfiguration which is something I've also experienced where I was literally out of body and had a couple out of body experiences like I was being taken up for the rapture but put back down into my body so I can be a messenger everything written in the Bible is true and these days I have no idea what happened that Jesus Christ now is putting us through the test of time to where your faith and your faith alone is going to save you. Your faith to remove from salvation, to remove from sin. I guess something really bad happened and the cross before the crown, the cross was preached if you believe you can just accept the cross and be covered in his blood and that everything is going to be okay after that, it's the least of everything. That is the least of it. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? Not him just being, he is a savior. He is a savior. He is not a destroyer. He's not the punisher of the world. He's the savior of the world of the spirit, the greatest among all celestial bodies, always has been. But I do not understand why in the world we all think that we just want to be forgiven of our sins. And isn't it easier to say that you want a relationship with Christ as well? A relationship with God as you understand him and fellowship amongst each other? He also told me to tell you it is written we are gods amongst ourselves. So we treat each other poorly. It cultivates the seed, a heart line between good and evil. The tree of knowledge and good and evil is on earth as it is in heaven, unfortunately, because of what you ingest daily, your daily bread, what you choose what you choose to watch, what you choose to read, how you choose to act, the vocabulary and the words you speak. And in today's day and age, no one cares. 
It seems like everybody curses and cusses every third sentence, every third word. And he's, he didn't speak like this. It seems like we've lost the, the language, the word, to build up anything of an understanding and wise godly character. An image, a godly image over the image of the world. And now, especially with the, the wayward drunkenness and a trap, a snare trap is written in the Bible. Jesus Christ wrote this, a snare trap of wayward drunkenness. And pay attention to the spirit that's in people, the way they speak, the words they choose to use. What do they call a trap house? Where do you think they came, from, came up with this terminology from? Out of thin air. The words we speak, it tells you that God's always calling us. Where are you? Or at least telling you exactly where you're headed. You're in a snare trap. He does not wish any man to go into hell. He wants us to all come to repentance. To start understanding about the thoughts. Pay attention to your words. Pay attention to your thoughts. Capture everything from sin. Become born again. It is the best, best decision that you could ever make in your entire life. One prayer. One prayer I said at eight years old in belief. And belief that he was real. Belief in God. The first time I believed in God, I supposed to just the other night, I literally, literally believed in God because of Noah. I was at vacation, I was at Bible school, Sunday school, and I looked at a tree. I was asked by, I asked my grandmother, how do we know God is real? For sure. And she said, look at a tree and tell me if you think God is real. And I knew in that moment he was real. I knew. And he's been there walking with me as a parable in the sand ever since. As a parable in the sand, as he does for everyone. And the body is the temple. The body is the temple. There's so much information right now out there on brain waves. And as the earth is, we are 98% accurate uh elemental from the earth our bodies are including including a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere and also an electromagnetic current we're made of water and we're made of blood water and blood which the water inside us also coincides with a magnetic field that links itself to the moon the stars the earth everything it's literally the truth. We're just now starting to reach heights and understanding and so many things about creation. And it terrifies me because they're doing this with, with vast amounts of scientific knowledge and not faith. Not faith. But not to mention the foolishness of God is always greater than the foolishness of man. So we have a unique time and perspective in history right now, which in the present, I should say, because tomorrow when I post this, it will be history, to reach the understanding, the wisdom, the understanding, and be able to be able to really, really demonstrate on how to make straight the path for the Lord Jesus Christ and his coming, his coming through man, in a man everlasting, the body of Christ. Did you know that Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul never even met in the flesh? I didn't know that until recently, a revelation given to me. I had no idea that yeah, he offered up himself as a sacrifice and was quickened, he was a quickened soul as well. The disciples described it as spirit in their members. They could feel spirit in their members. In the book of Revelations, Jesus Christ says you have a name written on your right thigh. A name written on your right thigh. A good seed. 
the good shepherd, as it's the prophet Jeremiah speaks of, whenever he talks about in the beginning, whenever Adam and Eve took from the tree of good and evil, but it's not necessarily the case. The case is, is that we live in a planet that needed to be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And God forgives those for who do not know, right? Well, how many times it says, it's saying in the Bible, wicked generational teaching after wicked generational teaching and the word understanding. And the word understanding. To understand that someone taught you how to tie your shoes. So, how in the world can you say that anything of this world that you were taught is correct? Nothing of this world that you were taught is correct. You have to be taught and raised up by the Heavenly Father. This is the reason why Jesus Christ said, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers but my Father in Heaven in synagogue? Because he was right. And he was only about 15 years of age teaching grown men grown men on how to behave and act as a, God, a man of God a child of God we all have a soul people a soul to take care of how quickly we forget that how in the world did we ever forget our connection of what we have here to God and right now in a time where I watch on TV more people believing in ancient alien theorist predictions, I need you to understand one thing on this. The Lord, the Lord is spirit, the Lord is host, the Lord was always the Lord, regardless of what it is. If there's 140 billion trillion infinite amount of galaxies out there, the possibility that there's life in every galaxy out there Maybe a, a possibility. It's pretty high because I would say us being here, there's probably other life out there. And the one thing I can say is the body is a temple. So if they're anything but born again, we're going to have trouble if we start having conversations in between two, two um, species let alone we can't even get along nation upon nation right now let alone two civilizations from a different galaxy well i'll be completely being born again and peaceful and live amongst each other and care and reverence and love and adoration for life itself i have a big big time concern about what the government does and what it seeks out right now in technology the day they build it it's already obsolete and it's on to the next big thing that is one thing about anything that we physically can build in this in this in this life any physical thing that we can build is unquenchable and and it's unquenchable you can keep building and keep building and keep building in all of creation with the care and adoration for life to educate one another to love and care for one another, to not demonstrate in the, one of the biggest atrocities that's happening on happening right now on planet Earth, which is the demonstration on how their chemistry has polluted the world with fentanyl. They have created cocaine and and stemming from all the way going back to um just crazy insane story after crazy insane story about what goes on down in Argentina coming from World War II with Hitler and his entire drug program. He, he quoted that the good doctor won the day. And after that, we never had a problem with wayward drunkenness after until stemming from that. And then you find out that there's empty block buildings down in Argentina and then a nuclear war almost breaks out down at the Bay of Pigs. And shortly thereafter, we weren't watching at all. We weren't watching at all. Airstrips in the middle of the ocean, and they were moving cocaine into the country at vast amounts. Skylines and city, 
landscapes were built and all for the name of all in the name of the root of all evil, the almighty dollar. And it saddens me because they chose to do, they chose to worship the devil to gain access to money instead of cultivating the greatest commodity that this planet has, its people. It's people. They would rather destroy lives and, and pollute the planet with drugs and guns and weapons and keep building them to no end. There's no, there's no good end here. I don't understand how in the world we think that as on earth as it is in heaven, and it is the truth, every hair on your head has been accounted for. You're in the presence of God at all times, every one of us, and your soul takes account of every action that you have ever done, every good deed, every good work, and every evil one, and every sin, so lest I lest I try to turn my sin into salvation and how I turn it into glory for God because I know that he saved me. Whoa. I know he saved me. Jesus Christ saved my life. Oh my goodness gracious, what is that? And even weird things coming around. Oh my goodness gracious, the drone. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa, that's scary. What the heck is that? What is that? Oh my goodness gracious. Look at the flight pattern on that. It just disappeared. Look how fast it's going. Oh my god, that's scary. It's just hovering around. Okay. You know, I have no idea what's going on there, but I think this is every fall. Oh man, making me all crazy right now. I got drones flying overhead. Speaking about this, um, well, I don't know. I just wanted to let you know that the Bible is 100% accurate. I love and care for you all. I pray that we are all reach a better understanding of who we are in Christ, who we are as children of God, who we are in the Holy Spirit, who we are in the Holy of Holies. Wow. Lightning. <laughs> and God is an awesome God indeed. Everywhere I go, I've been seeing some pretty awesome stuff. And I'm telling you, you're in his presence always. So, um, I pray that everybody finds time to get take a year of the Lord. A year of the Lord. There's so much going on right now. You can uh, find your find a living Bible. Um, the 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 book is a good literary read too. When you read the Bible, read it as literal. And when you read the Bible, when you read the Old Testament, don't read it as a fact that everything that was cursed was mankind cursing what it is itself, not God cursing man. You have to read it in that perspective as in everything that was cursed and God was angry, God wasn't angry, he was teaching us. He was teaching us as a father would teach a child. Blessed are those who can take correction as a child without taking it to heart. 
And one thing I can tell you is Jesus Christ was, had familiarity in the flesh. He said, those without sin cast the first stone. So is it easier to perform a miracle or to say that you are forgiven? And not only did he forgive, as you are forgiven, he performed the greatest miracle of pretty much biblical proportions as in a direct ascension to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, I have no idea on any other direct extension stories that have happened on this planet. But there are familiarities when it comes to um, the disciples talking about spirit and their members and over in India and talking about being one and one within enlightenment, I guess. Um, the truth is the truth. They have a chart about how their spirit and their members and where the spirit are in their members, they're able to communicate because the body is a temple. So Christ, Jesus was speaking about how he comes from the Father, he goes to the Father, he comes to you and he sends you a helper. So the spirit can come in and out. And it is the weirdest thing for me to try and to explain to people, but I have a whole lot, um, a whole lot of uh, evidence on how, how we're made and um, when you get a chill out of nowhere, sometimes he sends you a helper. <laughs> sometimes he sends you a helper. So start praying for uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit and discernment. And, uh, and find, find what, what really, really a purpose-driven, purpose disciple-driven life. Even if you can't speak in public, start playing uh, scripture on your phone, on the bus, or gospel music. Crank it up, because we need eyes and ears here. And there's so much garbage being said and spoken and nonsense out of people's mouths right now that the more goodliness, godliness that we, we speak over this planet, the better off it will be. Prayer absolutely helps. And in this way, in this way, the works that I do, my Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified. So, and everything you do, you know, it would be nice to start seeing people having Christian-based businesses, advertising that you're drug-free, able to have a good work environment, especially with the... Uh, the problems that we're having there as well. So I believe it's a unique time in history for Christians, especially if involved in construction or whatever, to absolutely be able to get some, some good business practices out there as well. And it also demonstrates that we are unified in Christ. God bless.